Introductions are bloody hard work. From meeting your significant other's parents for the first time, to desperately trying to think of two facts and a lie about yourself on your next work away day, to writing a gently comedic introduction to a gaming video on YouTube. It's never easy to make that good first impression. But a good intro is absolutely essential. In a world where almost everything we can imagine sits at our fingertips, the art of the video game opening has never been more important. It used to be that you could throw gamers into a world with little to no setup whatsoever. Teach us which button makes our character jump and which fires the big gun, and we'd be more than happy to spend hours in the little world devs had built for us. Now, not so much. If we're gonna be committing several hours of our lives to a game in this economy, with our paltry attention spans, you'd better make sure you hook us in right from the very start. I am GG Recon's own perpetually distracted Elliot, and here's five video game openings that pull you in right from hitting start. SWAT is 1084 at this tower. All units stand by, warrant is en route. Oh yes, come on, has anyone ever managed to watch that intro? Be thrown straight out of a window onto the streets and skyscrapers of New York City and not immediately just felt like Spider-Man? There are three things a good intro needs to be effective. It needs to teach you how the game works, set up the story and the main characters, and smack you across the face so hard you won't want to put it down until the end credits have rolled. And Insomniac's stellar Spider-Man delivers on all three fronts. We immediately get an idea of who this version of Peter Parker is. He's got experiments scattered across his room, but a lot of them are Spider-Man related. So this is a Peter who has established their superhero credentials. And he's also still the same old lovable doofus who can't pay his rent on time. But as he launches himself out of his apartment window and the music kicks up, we're swinging through the city streets searching for bad guys to beat up and citizens to save. And what better way to prepare players for the web-slinging heroics to come than by taking a brisk swing through the streets of New York and straight into an all-out brawl with some good old-fashioned baddies. By the time you arrive into the office of Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin, you're equipped with all the skills you'll need to make sure the Sinister Six don't have their wicked way with New York City. It's all here, folks. A tutorial wrapped up in the start of the story with a great main character intro and a banging soundtrack to boot. So... Should we kiss now? Yeah, maybe later. Mother, do they call to me? If there's one thing Kratos knows how to do, you know, short of murdering pantheons of gods, it's how to make an entrance. Pretty much every God of War game in history has a barnstormer of an opening to pull players into Kratos' Spartan, rage-fueled demolition of every Greek god in existence. But that's not the Kratos we meet at the very start of 2018's reimagined God of War. Here we meet a more stoic ghost of Sparta, facing down the loss of his wife and the prospect of raising his son, who, judging from their first few conversations, he's barely spent five minutes with while Fear was alive. This is not the angry deity with severe daddy issues that we used to butcher gods back in the old days. In the opening hour, we see Kratos try and fail to show some fatherly love, be incredibly harsh while trying to teach the boy how to hunt, and show genuine fear. Not a feeling often associated with Kratos, when Boulder turns up at his house and threatens to find Atreus hidden in the basement below. If all that complex character development in the space of about 30 minutes wasn't enough for you, then we also have the fight with Boulder. And oh my various Greek and Norse gods, what a way to introduce you to proper God of War combat. It helps that there's probably never been a more satisfying weapon to smack someone with than the Leviathan Axe in the history of gaming, but it lets you put everything you've learned in the first hour or so of the game by battling Droger and a very pissed off giant into practice against an opponent that isn't just an equal of Kratos, but on a whole other level to him. Boulder so easily shaking off any damage you do to him, what with him not being able to feel pain in Norse mythology, is the perfect way to set up this semi-sympathetic antagonist. And the fight gives Kratos just the push he needs to give his son a chance and set in motion the events that will bring about Ragnarok. Gather your things. We are leaving. Hey, you. Finally awake. 
Yes, it's become one of the biggest memes in recent memory, but come on. We can hardly talk about iconic video game openings without giving a mention to Bethesda's ageless RPG classic Skyrim. Simply uttering the phrase, you're finally awake, to any gamer of a certain vintage will have us reminiscing in seconds about the first time we were dropped face first into Helgen during a dragon attack. But Skyrim's intro is a whole lot more than just a half-baked meme punchline. Truth is, it actually does one hell of a good job of using storytelling to teach newbies to Tamriel how this whole being the Dragonborn thing is gonna work. Sure, you could create a character on a bland loading screen before you even go into the game, or you could be asked by an Imperial Guard who you are, just as you're about to be executed for being a traitor to the Empire. It immediately sets up the central conflict between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials, and is a far more dynamic way to bring players into character creation. Although we can imagine we gave Hadvar nightmares for weeks after seeing us transform from Dark Elf to Nord to Orc and back to Dark Elf again. Character newly formed, it's time to be summarily executed for a crime we didn't commit. Except no it's not because now there's a dragon and it's burning Helgen to the ground. And now everything's on fire. And now we have to choose, do we go with the kindly Imperial Guard who tried to save us, or the Stormcloak prisoner we rode into this hellscape with right at the beginning? Usually I go with Hadvar, but it doesn't matter who you choose, it all plays out the same anyway. But it's another little way the game's opening introduces players to the conflict that is decimating Skyrim early on. After that, it's just a short hop, skip and a jump through a collapsing keep and bear cave, learning the basics of combat, movement, stealth and magic along the way before you're finally let loose into everything Skyrim has to offer. Skyrim's intro is so good because it's all about teaching you how to play while also pushing the story forwards. Sure, it can grind to a halt once you're thrown out into the world and can do whatever the hell you like. Maybe my Dark Elf likes being a poor fisherman. You ever think about that? But a dragon attack interrupting your own execution is one hell of a way to get you invested in a game right from the start. I really hate to bring the mood down a bit, but not all intros are about feeling like a badass. Hell, some intros aren't even about teaching you how to play the game. No, some intros are there for one reason, and one reason only. To upset you. Alright, the opening hour of The Last of Us does a lot more than that, but that doesn't mean I didn't cry AGAIN while replaying it for this video. Naughty Dog pull absolutely no punches and set the dark, depressing and incredibly emotional tone of the game with a slow burn intro that ramps up into pure zombie fueled chaos. We immediately see how close Joel is to his daughter Sarah, and how hard he's having to work to keep them afloat arriving back from work at stupid o'clock on his own birthday. Hard working dad, caring daughter, I'm in. Awoken by a phone call from Uncle Tommy, we're put into the sleepy shoes of Sarah, while she increasingly desperately tries to find her dad, as tiny hints of the horror unfolding slowly play out in the background. The explosion. <laughs> the newspaper, the barking dog silenced in an instant. We watch The Last of Us's post-pandemic world forming in real time, through Sarah's eyes, only learning what's happening as she learns it. In the car ride, we watch as the world begins to implode around us, society collapsing piece by piece, while we as the player are helpless and can do nothing about it, but observe from the back of a car. The Last of Us makes it clear right from the very start that this is not a game that cares about your feelings or any of its characters if it keeps the story going. We all knew that Sarah wasn't a big part of the main game, she wasn't really in any of the trailers or marketing, but even so, I'm not sure we really expected her to die, and certainly not so suddenly and brutally. Despite us as the player doing everything right, getting her to the safety of a military checkpoint, it still goes wrong. We still get shot at, and Sarah still dies. Sometimes, even after doing everything right, we still fail. An important introductory lesson to learn before we dive into everything The Last of Us has waiting for us. And Joel's helpless sobs as Sarah goes from crying in pain to deathly silent. I want to pick you up. I know, baby. I know it hurts. Come on, baby. Please. I know, baby. I know. Sarah. Baby.
Well, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that 2016's reboot of Doom, or any of the Doom games really, are actually incredibly deep and emotional journeys of self-reflection or anything like that. Nah, 2016's Doom knows what it's about. You didn't buy this game for its timeless story, branching narrative arcs, or in-game consequences. You came here to crank some heavy metal and blast some demons back to hell. And the game happily obliges, with probably the most Doom opening it's possible to imagine. From the moment you wake up with Doom Guy shackled to a satanic ritual table, to the moment you don the now iconic armour, the game throws you straight into the chaos of a full-blown demonic invasion. And Doom Guy ain't got time for anyone's bull****. In between tearing demons limb from limb, you pick up new weapons and encounter new enemies to dismember in ever more gloriously bloody ways. The action constantly ramping up as you get closer and closer to your goal of escaping whatever facility you've ended up in and taking the fight to hell itself. As a crescendo of heavy metal rises and you're forced to listen to the all for the betterment of mankind excuses from scientists for the thousandth time, Doom Guy cracks his knuckles, cocks his shotty, and gets ready to do what he does best. Honestly, Doom 2016 just nails the feel of the old school Doom games. There's no need to ask questions. There's no need for a fancy tutorial or lengthy exposition. It's all very simple. Here's a shotgun and a whole army of monsters to shoot at. Go have fun. So there we go, five of the best openings in video game history. There's a whole lot of intros we could have put on this list, so be sure to let us know which games pulled you in right from the very start down in the comments. Outros are just as difficult as intros, to be honest with you, so give this video a like if you've made it this far, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I've been Elliot from GG Recon, and I'll see you on the Carriage into Helgen. You, you're finally awake.